Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. I'm not very formal. Here's today's zinger. Is that a male voice you're hearing? Oh my! You know male crocheters can do it better. Just saying. <laughs> Let's get on with today's tutorial. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Crochet Big Basket Weave Blanket. So what we have here is an ultra thick yarn. This is called Bernat Velvet Plus. It's really quite thick. Uh, today on camera I am going to use a five millimeter size H crochet hook so that you can see the stitches. In person you can feel where the stitches need to go but on camera you don't have that option. So I'm going to just use regular yarn to show you how to do this so you can make this extra thick blanket. It's asking for a size M as in Michael crochet hook a nine millimeter for those that are using metric and there's also a multiple so that you can change the size of this and we'll be getting into that in a bit. So it's just a two pager and then I will show you how it's done and we will go through the repeating pattern in order for you to be able to do this for yourself. So without further ado let's begin. So let's create a slip knot to begin. So the multiples to change the size of this blanket is multiples of six plus seven. So you'll crochet one, two, three, four, five, six. Is it big enough? Yes or no? If not, keep on going. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and et cetera, and you keep on going like that. At the end of it, you can just add seven, or if you want the exact sample, you can just chain 79 and it's still the same information. So I'm just gonna do a small swatch with you on camera. So I'll do the multiples. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, three, four, five, six. If I'm satisfied with the width of it, I just have to add seven. So the multiples of six plus seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So get all your complete row done and then we're going to begin the foundation row next. Let's begin to do the foundation row next and you're gonna turn it over and get the back hump of the stitch itself of the chain and count back to the fourth one. So one, two, three, and four. So once you get to your four, just turn over the chain and get the back hump and double crochet. And what I need you to do is all across your chain staying on the back hump of it is just double crochet all the way across. So please do that for your foundation row and I'll be right back in a moment. Coming all the way across obviously you'll have it much bigger. If you're choosing to go bigger you can do a scarf in this size too. It's pretty easy. And so you'll come all the way to the end and then turn your work and let's begin the first row. So let's begin the first row and I need you to chain two. This is going to count as a half double crochet. And on the end, the other side, it's going to be a half double crochet that goes in. But everything else in between is either a double crochet front post or a back post. So starting in the next post right here, we're going to make the next three as a front post double crochet. So wrap the hook and coming into the side of the post and pull it out from the background. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two and two. And you need to do three of those totals. So that was one. So wrap. This is two and the next one is three. Now the next three in a row will each be a back post double crochet. So just wrap the hook and come from behind and pop it out between the post and go back to the back of the project. Yarn over, pull through pull through two and two and so you gotta do three of those in a row. So that was one. So wrap and come from the back. And then wrap, come from the back. So you're gonna alternate between it's either a front post or a back post. This is the six by the way. This is the, why it's a multiple of six. So let's do the next three. They're gonna be front post double crochet. So we have one two and three and then the next three are back post double crochet. And I want you to keep alternating between the two of those and go all the way across on the first row and I'll be right back 
in a moment. And coming all the way across we have four stitches left and we're currently on the back post. So the, le the next three before the end is a front post double crochet. So it's just a matter of keeping it in sequence. And it makes it balanced with the other side. Cause we started with a front post double crochet on here. Now the very last one the turning chain is going to be a half double crochet. So just go right into the chain. Don't go to a space. Go to a chain and make that as a half double crochet. And the reason why you're making it a shorter stitch is that because this these double crochets which are longer are coming down further it keeps the height of the stitch. Let's turn our work and do row number two. So in row number two we're going to chain two and see how they're on the back posts already. I want you to maintain what exactly you see. So these here are on the back posts. So keep them on the back posts. So the first three are back post double crochet. And eventually we'll have them switch locations so that we create the basket weave but we have to do a little bit more before we can do that. So the next three are in the front. So keep those three in the front. Front post double crochet and etc. And you need to do this all the way across for row number two. And it's just nice and easy. Follow what you see and I'll be right back in a moment. I'm coming up to the end of the row. I'm matching exactly what I see. And so what do you think the last stitch is going to be? Did you say a half double crochet? That's the right answer if you did. If you came up with something else, mm, 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 you're in trouble today. So that very last turning chain make it a half double crochet right into the chain work itself. Don't go into a space because it'll keep it open and make the last stitch a half double crochet. And now we're ready to turn and move on. And you can see the texture is amazing. Now let's move on to row number three. So in row number three we're going to now switch our locations in order to have things basket weaving itself. So what we're going to do is that we're going to chain two and it says the third row is as, as in the second row and if you remember that we started with a double crochet back post. So these that are currently in the front post will now be a back. So wrapping it and do it, them as a back post and that will pull them back to the other side which creates the look of basket weave. So these three that are front posts will now switch locations and go in the back. And then the next three that are currently in the back you're gonna bring them forward and make those as a front post double crochet. So you're doing exactly opposite to what you see. Does that make sense hopefully? Okay so the next three in the front so you're gonna pull them to the back with the back post double crochet. And then the next one is going to be a front post double crochet. So we're gonna pull those forward. So please do this all the way for row number three. So I'm coming all the way across on row number three. Just I feel like I'm a kid where you know you show up at school and it's backwards day and you have to wear your clothes backwards. Anybody remember that? You can leave me a comment in the in the video notes if you want to. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. I remember that as well. You know it pants never fit right. But it looked fun. <laughs> so we did the the three there in the back post and then the final is a half double crochet in the in the final turning chain. Let's begin row number four. And let's turn our work and get ready. Row number four is the same as the first row. So you're going to chain two and we're gonna stay on the front side. So you see that they're on the front already. So make this as a front post double crochet. So we're gonna maintain exactly what we see. So if it's on the front keep it on the front and if it's on the back keep it on the back. Okay so here's the next three they're on the back. So we're gonna make those as continue those to be a back post double crochet to keep that look going. So please do this all the way across for the fourth row. I'll be back in a moment. At the end of number four just maintaining exactly what you see. So keep things in the in the front here because that's where they are currently. And then in the very last one half double crochet in that turning chain. So let's begin the fifth round, uh, row in a moment. So turn to work and let's begin number five. Let's begin row number five and in row number five we're gonna change the location. So currently you can see that we've been doing the back stuff right now. So you're gonna chain two and in row number five you're gonna bring things forward. So the first three will be a front post double crochet instead. So you're gonna make it opposite to what you already see. And that helps that pattern really pop. So the, you can see these are on the front. So you're gonna make these on the back. So a back post double crochet. So you're just gonna change the location of each one of your stitches going across. If it's on the front move it to the back. If it's on the back move it to the front. And do this all the way across for row number five. 
at the end of number five you're just continuing to maintain the stitches as you know it and don't forget you're gonna half double crochet into that turning chain right there. So go right into the chain work itself with a half double crochet. Let's turn our work and do row number six next. In row number six this is going to be the end before we start doing a repeat and so let's begin this. So you're just gonna chain two and number six is the same as number two. So in number two it was the back post double crochet so just keep it what you see. So these are back post double crochets. So just gotta remember every two rows it changes locations. Now these three are going to be in the front. Now seven and eight are completely different than what we're doing now and what I realized after I started filming today is that the pattern is more to it than I expected. So I just realized that as I was sitting here staring at the sample in between takes I'm like there's not, it's not what I thought it was. So we're gonna be covering that next and go all the way across here in row number six and then we'll talk about the sample. I'm coming across in number six and just maintaining what I already can see and we're gonna begin to change the story in just a moment. So come right into your turning chain and we're gonna go right to the sample to show you what's changing and I also want you to get a stitch marker handy because you'll need that as well. So let's go back to the pattern and show you what's going on. So I was trying to figure out why seven and eight have so many instructions if this was a basket weave and what I'm really looking at here is this particular sample and you really can't see it when it's on the chair either but I realize is that the basket weave here is only on an edge and on an edge going up but in the interior it's just a half double crochet and when I look at this sample here do you see that? This is your basket weave just on the bottom that we just did. We're just only gonna work with the edging going up and everything in between is going to be a half double crochet before we bring back the basket weave on the opposite side of there. So rows number seven, eight, nine, and 10 are going to be the repeat then until you get to a certain size and then you're going to repeat then one through six for the final in order to have the basket weave kind of go in frame your entire blanket. So let's try number seven next and I'll show you some tips. If I were you and you were me what I would strongly recommend instead of having to count how many half double crochets you have uh, going across because it doesn't give that number anyway but it's telling you to stop on the um, is to go all the way until there's ten stitches left. So there's three, six, nine and then the edge one is ten. So this basket weave right here is going to be where I want you to put in a stitch marker. So when you get there you know automatically that you're gonna have to do your basket weave to create the edging and so on this side obviously the sample will be much bigger but this side here the first ten will also be the basket weave. So you got the three, six, and nine and then the starting uh, chain two is one. So in my particular swatch it's so sh it's so short is that really the just the very middle here will be half double crochet but yours would be like much bigger than that. So let's try it and once we mark this one it's just gonna be slamming your stitches in and when you get there you just have to make a decision and we'll talk about that when we get there. So here is your repeat for seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the, number seven is chain two that counts as your first half double crochet and it's telling us to do a back post double crochet and what we want to focus on is these three sets only. So this one, this one, and this one. And so you can see that it's time to change it to the back side anyway. So that'll give you an indication of what you need to do. So you're going to just make opposite those those um, nine stitches. So this will be a front post, sorry, a back post double crochet. just like that. And then what we have is that these ones here that are on the back they're gonna be a front post. And then finally the last three here are going to be the back post. And so now your edging is done so that you'll have the beautiful edging that is in the blanket. And so now the remaining all the way until you get to where you've marked it with a stitch is all gonna just be a half double crochet each. So in my case there's only three stitches left because the swatch is so small. So it's a half double crochet, it's a half and a half. So it makes the center of the blanket look flat. So when you get over to this side everything is opposite. We, we confirmed that already. So when you get to this side make opposite to what you see. Okay, so these will be a back post double crochet to start. 
I should have, I didn't even realize this was happening. I, I would have made my swatch a little bit bigger. Of course. Now the next three are on the back so we wanna bring those forward so we're making them opposite. And then finally these three are opposite so these are gonna be in the back. And then finally the turning chain is going to be a half double crochet right in the turning chain. So that was row number seven. So we have our basket weaves on the edge. The middle is just a flat half double crochet. It'll be much bigger of course. And now you'll turn your work and let's begin number eight. So it might be just easy to, for you to remember now. You'll have flat edges or flat spaces in the middle. So you'll be able to clearly see these ten stitches and you'll be able to clearly see the ten stitches after the flat spot. So in number eight when you start you're gonna chain two and you're going to just keep it what you can see. If you can see that it's not time to change it to go backwards. So you're gonna make the first three a front post double crochet. And then the next three is a back post double crochet. And then the next three are front post double crochet. So we're just matching what we see. So you may not have to do a stitch marker going forward once you can see where you need to go. Once you have that you're gonna have your flat spot in the middle. So it'll be for some distance. So continue to make all of those a half double crochet until you get to the last ten stitches that you'll be able to see where that texture picks back up. So in this case once you get all the way across and you're ready for the final ten you just match what you see. So the first three here will be a front post double crochet. The next three are back post double crochet. The next three are front post double crochet. And then finally you got that turning chain right with the half double crochet to go in there. And so this will be row number eight but we have two more rows still left in the repeat. And why do you think that is? It's because you need to change these locations. So that we need to make sure that they go backwards to keep that basket weave going. So let's begin number nine. Let's turn our work. In row number nine it's the same as number eight. And so you're gonna chain two and that's your first one of ten. So all these basket weaves that you see the, the next nine they're all gonna be opposite to what you have in there. So they're going to be a front post double crochet now in the first three. And then we have the next three as a back post double crochet. Keep thinking of uh, Paula Abdul with opposites attract meaning opposite you have to do opposite to what you see. So the next three here got to be come forward and do a front post double crochet. Then that's it for their basket weave on this edge and so you'll have your half double crochets all in the center. So you'll make those each as a half double crochet and then eventually you'll hit the other edge which I'm about to because I'm small swatch. So you're making opposite to what you see. So these have to come forward And then the next three have to go back. And the next three come forward. And I realized why they're kind of doing this because this yarn is really quite ultra thick that if you did a whole blanket and basket weave with this blanket it would take so much yarn. So the half double crochet is a way of uh, flattening out the middle section so that you can get further with your balls. So you're going to then just put in half the crochet in the turning. Okay let's do row number 10 which is the final of the repeat. In row number 10 it's the same as row number 7. So you're going to chain 2 and it's going to be a back post double crochet. So you're going to match exactly what you see. So it's going to be a back post double crochet to start for the first 3. So 1, I don't even know if you really need to count it to be honest with you. I think you can physically see it even with the that fluffy yarn. 
So the next three are going to be on the front side. So front post double crochet. And then the next three are going to be back post double crochet. And then you're going to be on the flat spot in the middle of your blanket after that. So then you'll have double crochet yourself across that spot. And then you'll start the 10 stitches before the other side. Okay, so you can kind of almost see the flat spots there. It's kind of, <laughs> maybe I'm pushing the boundaries. So what I want to do is that we want to maintain what we see. So these will be starting with the back post. And if you're ever not sure, just look to this side and see how you finished. Because it's gonna be how you start this side. So it's a back post double crochet. And then a front post double crochet for three. And then a back post double crochet for three. And then finally the last one is a half double crochet in the turning chain. So I'm just gonna turn my work and just let it flat. We're gonna talk about the repeating because everything that you need to know it, you have now already recorded so that you can go back in time to, to find that just in case you need that help. Let's go back to the pattern and let's examine that. So after you finish number 10, this is where we are. It says repeat 7, 8, 9, and 10 until the pattern is about 44 and a half inches. You can customize this. You can do uh, uh, 7 through 10 as many times as that you, that you want to. And so you'll do that and you'll finish there. So you wanna finish on the eighth row when you go to finish. So you'll do 7 through 10, 7 through 10, and when you're ready to kind of finish, or it's the 44 and a half mark, the last row should be eighth row. And then that's when you're going to pick up and you're going to create this instruction right here. So after that's done, you'll repeat the first to the sixth row one more time and then fasten off. And what that's doing is that when you look at it from this perspective, you're just going across with the flat spot and you have the edging, this is going to provide that final edging that will go in on the other side. So both will have that just like we did here. So I want you to do that and then we're gonna talk about doing the top uh, and the bottom fringe. Once you're ready for the top edge, so you'll have to do all your repeats. I haven't done it here just so that you're aware so you can't compare that. So what we want to do is we wanna start on the right side and how will you know that? This is the starting tail. So when we did our chain and then we came back across, when we came back across that was the foundation row which is row number one. So when you're looking at it from this perspective, okay, this here with the tail on this side of the project means that this is the right side of the project facing up. So what I want to do is that I want to begin and I'm going to slip stitch into the last row, into the first stitch of the last row. Again, fringing is kind of personal whether you like it or not is up to you. And what we're going to do is that we're just going to slip stitch it and join it. And then we're going to chain 11. So we want to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So we're going to go second chain from the hook and you are just going to slip stitch into everything all the way back down. This helps conserve yarn by the way and it makes the, the fringe not so bulky when you slip it all the way back. So you have to decide if this is something that you wanna do. It's part of the characteristics of this drapey blanket. And you'll notice that the yarn is very drapey which, uh, which is very flowy. And once you're all the way back in you're gonna come all the way back down and it says to slip stitch in each of the next two stitches. So in the next two just slip stitch. So slip and slip and then you'll begin again. So chain 11 and then uh, second chain on the hook you'll slip stitch all the way back down. So you'll do that all the way across and then once you have that done you'll fasten off and then you'll turn it over and just look to where this is if you've left it on there and then you can turn it over. That's the right side facing up and you can do that. Let's just uh, cover very quickly on how to weave in your tails. You will need to do this with this particular type of yarn if you're using it, the, the Velvet Plus and let's begin that next.
So with any tails that you will have you would have noticed that there was a lot of yarn that was used. It was 13 balls. It's very bulky yarn um, in that sense. So there's a lot of yardage. Uh, not a lot of yardage but there's a lot of thickness to it. And that's what elevates it up. So you're just gonna put it through and you'll put it enough that it can drag through. Try to get it between some fibers. So if you weave it between the stitches it will fall out. So just try to make sure it separates some fiber work. And you'll go back and forth a total of three times every time you have that. And if you want to tie a knot you can. It's up to you. I, I don't know if I would but that's just me. And that would be how you would finish it off if you were thinking about it. So this here is the Crochet Big Basket Weave Blanket. It's ultra thick. It's ultra soft. And it's a really neat idea. We hope you have a good one and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.